Hey guys, it's Saleh. Today I want to write a swing trend following strategy. That means we're going to try to ride the trend for as long as possible and only exit when we think the trend is over. Next, I will use this strategy as the base for my next video, which is going to be about using the genetic algorithm to optimize the results that we already have. So let's get into it. The main indicators that I want to use in this strategy are going to be three moving average lines. Now I'm using the EMA, the purple line here has the period of 21, the yellow one has a period of 50, and the blue one has a period of 100. Now the way you can change that on trading view, by the way, is by going here and changing the length. All right, so we want to open a long position only when the 21 period is above the 50 and both of them are above the blue line here, which is 100 period. So this would be an example of when we would go long. Now here's an example for a short trade. And obviously all the conditions now have to be the opposite for us to take a short trade. So here, which is the purple line 21 moving average is below the yellow one. And both of them are below the, the value for the 100 moving average, we would go short. I also have another condition because in these cases, when we are touching the purple line, I don't want to go short. So I will also say that I want to make sure the price is below the purple line. So now let's go to Jesse and create a new strategy. I'm going to name it Trend Swing Trader. Now, if I go back to my editor and look for it, I will find it here. All right, so this is the code that Jesse just generated for us and we're going to edit it. So the first thing I'm going to do is to define a new property and name it trend. And in it, we're going to define three moving averages. So the first one is going to be TA, EMA, and I will pass in the current candles. And as for the period, I will pass 21. The second one is going to be the same code, but with the period of 50. And the third one is going to be the same, but with the period of 100. Now my condition is pretty simple. If E3 is smaller than E2, and that is smaller than E1, smaller than the current price, then we are in an uptrend, so I will return 1. Otherwise, if the condition is the opposite, I will return minus 1. And if none of the above is true, I will return 0, which means we are in a ranging market. So my shoot long method is going to be simply return when the current trend equals 1. And the opposite will go for the shoot short method. So if we want to make sure the trend is minus one, in other words, in a downtrend. As for position sizing, first, I'm going to give it my entire capital to just open a position with the market order. So I'm going to say quantity equals utils size to quantity. First, I'm going to pass my entire available margin. And for entry, I will pass the current price. Actually, let's create a new variable here for it. So entry is going to be self price. And as for fee rate, I will pass in self fee rate. So my buy order is going to be quantity and then the entry. And I will do the opposite for my go short method. All right, so and we don't really care about the shoot cancel entry because we are opening the position with the market order. So it doesn't really matter if this function is returning true or false. All right, so we have our entry rules now. But what about our exit rules? When would we exit this trade? What would be our take profit and stop loss orders? So for that, let's go back to the chart. As for the stop loss, I'm going to use the ATR indicator, which is one of my favorites when it comes to setting the stop loss. What it does is it tells us the average price that every candle will change. So for example, in this point in time, when we are opening the position, the average true range is $886. So if I do it like this, and this is going to be my stop loss, this would be that value, 880. But because this is too short, I'm going to use two times of this. So I will increase this to something around here. And for my take profit, I will use something similar. But because this is a swing trading strategy, we want to be able to ride the trend for as long as possible. So here's what I'm going to do. I will exit half my position at this point 
And when we hit this point, I'm going to update my stop loss to become a bit lower. And we're going to keep doing this for as long as the trend goes down. So this way we can ride the trend for as long as possible. And hopefully we'll be able to close it somewhere around here. All right, so let's go back to the code. I'm going to say when the position opens, and I'm going to use the unopen position method for this. If it's a long position, I will say my stop loss order is going to be well, first we need to pass the quantity and that's going to be the current position's quantity and the price is going to be the current price minus the current ATR multiplied by 2. And my tech profit is going to be the same but multiplied by 3. But as I said, I want to exit only half my position at this point, not the entire. So I will divide this by 2. And if it's a short position, I will do the opposite. So in a short position, my sub loss is going to be two times of the ATR above the current price. And my tick profit, I mean half of it, is going to be the current price minus three times of the current ATR. All right, so we are exiting half of our position this way. We also have our stop loss. But what about that other half of our take profit? When this order is executed, I want to bring down my stop loss order. Obviously, I'm talking about a short position here. If it was a long position, it would be the other way. And I want to use some kind of trailing stop. Now, how can we do that with Jesse? So here's how. I'm going to define another method called unreduced position. Now, this event method will get triggered right after the size of my position gets reduced. Now notice the word reduced here. It means it's not closed. It's just reduced. In our case, it will get reduced in half. So if that's the case, I'm going to say if it's a long position, my stop loss is going to be the quantity of my position at this point in time, which is going to be self.position quantity. And as for the price, I want it to be at my entry price. So this way, even if the price goes against me, I will exit the second half of my position in break even. So the first half gave me profits. The second half would give me nothing. It will also lose me nothing. So I will still sit in profit. So I will say self position dot entry price. Now, I won't do any take profit because if this method is getting executed, that means my take profit order has already been executed. So we don't have any take profit order anymore. So we don't need to update it either. And our sub loss is getting updated to be here now. So by the way, when you do this, Jesse will automatically cancel the previous sub loss order and submit the new one for us. So we don't need to worry about canceling that previous one. So all I need to say at this point is to say, L if it's a short position, do the same thing. All right. Now, if you remember, I said I want to exit the second half of my position with some kind of trailing sub order. And right now we only set the sub plus once and update it twice here. So how would it be trailing? Because let's say the trend keeps going down. And in that case, we need to keep updating that order, right? So the way I do that is I define another method called update position. And in it, I'm going to say if it's a long position, the sub loss is going to be the current position's quantity and the price is going to be the current price minus the current ATR multiplied by 2. And for a short position, it would be the current price added by 2 times of the current ATR. But here's the thing, if I do it just like this, it will always update that sub loss even if the price is going against us. So I'm going to update my code that this is going to be the minimum of either this or the current position's entry price, which was our previous stop price that we set here. So I'm also going to do the same here. All right, so we're almost finished, but there's one more thing we need to do. So if I run this strategy right now, this update position method is going to get executed on every candle. And that means it will even get executed before this method is executed. And that's not cool. Because first, we need one of these orders to get executed. And then when the position is reduced, then we want to update our sub loss on every new candle after that. So here, I'm going to add one condition. I will say if the reduced count equals 1, then I want to do this. All right, so we are ready to execute our first backtest now. Let's go back to Jesse. This exchange is fine. This symbol is also fine. And as for time frame, I will choose the four hours. 
and I will pick my strategy and I'm backtesting it since the beginning of 2022 up until a few days ago. The fast mode is on and so is the benchmark option. All right, let's execute it. All right, so it looks actually pretty okay and we are beating the market. The max drawdown is minus 23% and the profit is 77%. The win rate is 47% and we have an average win to loss ratio of 1.4. Okay, so this looks okay, but I believe we can improve it. So the first thing I'm going to do is to do what I always do for my position sizing. Because right now we are using our entire capital for every single trade and that's never good. So I'm going to go back to my source code and in my Golang method, Instead of doing it like this, first I will calculate my sub price right here and it's going to be the entry minus 2 times of the ATR and instead of using this function, I will use risk to quantity. As for the first one, I will pass my available margin, the entry will be the current price, then I will pass the sub price as a third argument and the fee rate is going to be my current fee. All right, so I will also do the same for my short positions. And let's go back to Jesse. Now remember these numbers, it's 77% profit with the max drawdown of minus 23%. Let's re-execute it. All right, it's saying we're missing one required argument. Let's go back here. So I forgot to set the risk per capital number, which is actually the most important number in this function. So I'm going to risk 3% of my capital per each trade. I'll do the same here. Let's go back, run it again. All right, so not only I increase our profit slightly, but also our max drawdown number is reduced. So that's pretty cool. It's very small change in our position sizing made our, our results better, even though we're using all the same indicator entry and exit rules. So how cool is that? All right, there's another improvement that I want to do to it. So if you take a look at the price here, this is a ranging market and our equity curve is going down here. This is a typical issue with trend following strategies because when you're trading the trend, you want to avoid the ranging conditions. And one of the best ways that I do that is by using the ADX indicator. So let's remove the ATR. The way the ADX works is that we have a value between 0 and 100. And it will not tell us the direction of the trend, it will only tell us the strength of the current trend. In other words, if I set a threshold, let's say at number 25, whenever the value of the ATR is below this, below this threshold line, you can see that we are not in a trend and we want to avoid trading. But whenever the value goes above it, then we are in a trend. That's... Now here we were in an uptrend. We were also in an uptrend here. And here we are in a downtrend. All right, let's go to the beginning of my strategy. Let's define a new property called the ADX. And in it, I'm going to say return whether or not the current ADX is bigger than my threshold, which will be 25. And then I will go to my should long method and add another condition. I will say and self.adx. I will also do the same for my should short function. All right, so let's go back to Jesse. Now remember this profit number, 79%, and this max drawdown, minus 18. Let's re-execute it. And now, not only my profit increased drastically, my max drawdown is also reduced to a significantly better number. And if you take a look at the equity curve, when the price was in a range, our equity curve did not go down drastically anymore. The win rate is at 52% and our average win to loss ratio is 1.57. So this is pretty cool, but I want to show you something. If I were to backtest this since the beginning of 2000, 2024, you will get these results, which look really good, but one might say that, hey, we're not beating the market. I want to make more than what a buy and hold would give me. And I don't really care about the volatility. Well, if that's you, here's why this strategy is still better, because my max drawdown is minus 10%, while the market was doing significantly worse. And my volatility tolerance is much more than 10%. I can take maybe up minus 30%. So, 
If I go back to our strategy and increase our risk per capital from three to let's say five and rerun the back test, now we are making more. And the result of it is that the max return is just a bit worse, but it's still significantly better than the market itself. So if you still want to beat the market, I can just multiply this by some kind of number, let's say two, and rerun it. Now we are making more than what the market was making. And my max return is still an acceptable number. So I can increase my position size even further if I have the tolerance for that amount of volatility, which I personally don't. But I'm just saying that if your goal is to just beat the profits that the market would have given you by simply buying and holding your positions and you don't care about the volatility, then you can do this. Now, obviously, to do this, we're going to have to use leverage and we are using the leverage right now. In fact, my leverage number for this exchange is at number two. So you can even increase that to another number such as five or ten and make huge profits. But I personally don't do that because volatility is really important to me because I want to be able to sleep at night. So you do whatever works for you and I do the same for me. Now before I forget, I kept working on this strategy and I made a premium version of it and I submitted it to our strategies index page, which you can find here. And these are the results for 2022. So if you are a premium user, just go ahead and download the code for this strategy. Now for my next video, I'm going to take this strategy that we just wrote and then use Jesse's optimization mode, which uses the genetic algorithm to optimize our parameters to get better numbers out of it. If that's something you're interested, make sure to stick around for the next video. Now, before I leave you, we have a giveaway. Now, a random person who likes this video, subscribes to the channel and posts a comment is going to receive 1 million bunk token. All right, let's pick the winner for my previous video. And the winner is... It was helpful to see someone familiar with the framework build a complete strategy from scratch. Thank you so much for your comment. Please reach out to me so that I can send you your tokens. Alright, thanks for watching and happy trading. Mm -hmm.